The clock is ticking on Kamala Harris. Less than two weeks until Election Day, Democrats are getting prickly about her campaign. Politico says she's running on yesterday and Trump rather than tomorrow and her. Kamala still hasn't been able to answer the easiest question, who are you? She can't tell us because one mistake, game over. The election is that close. Holy cow, from a historical perspective, we are heading into the election with the closest polls in the Electoral College that we have ever seen, at least over the last 50 years. Real Clear says the race is too close to call. It's the tightest race in over half a century. And the only campaign event Kamala's done in the last 48 hours? She stopped at a deli. Pastrami on rye and a slice of German chocolate cake. Mm. Democrats are telling each other, if this is a vibe election, the current vibes ain't great. And now people are starting to cry. As I said, people are very emotional today. And a lot of tension in Democratic land because uh, they're behaving as if they're losing. I'm just telling you that's the view of Democrats, too, not just the media, not just Republicans. Trump's in Georgia tonight with country star Jason Aldean, Tulsi Gabbard, RFK Jr., and Tucker. We're expecting some pyrotechnics tonight. We'll take you there later, so stay tuned. Meanwhile, Democrats are still in the getting-to-know-her phase. <laughs> Kamala wants America to know she's friends with Liz Cheney. And the left doesn't like that. The Cheney thing... <laughs> do, do we really have to do that? Uh, look, I, it goes broader than that. Look, Bernie Sanders... Dick Cheney, Taylor Swift. No, 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 no. Oh, the shooting? No, no, no. Having the Cheneys on board? No. You can't Dick Cheney or Taylor Swift. No. We're a big ten. We're a big ten. What country did Taylor Swift get us to invade? It doesn't mean they agree with us. We're not going to take their foreign policy decisions and discussions, you know, and implement those. We're going to take their... Promise? Yes, promise. She sat down with Telemundo, and she looked two-faced. Watch. Right now, we're talking about border security, and there's nobody, no Democrat, talking about a pathway to citizenship, uh, an immigration relief, am, and, and the, the benefits that migrants bring to this country. Oh, but there's no question that migrants bring... America is a country that is, it was built in part by immigrants who have But people are concerned about their TPS, their DACA, their... And um, we're talking about uh, mass deportations. I'm not talking about What do you stand on mass deportations? You, what's, what's your stand mm. there? This, uh, we need smart, humane immigration policy in America mm -hmm. that includes a pathway to citizenship. Mm. So she went from tough girl touring the border with agents to mass amnesty. Telemundo had to interrupt her almost as much as Brett Baer. Paul suggests that you're having shortcomings with Latinos, specifically with Latino men. Mm. Why do you think that President Donald Trump has been able to, to make those gains with Latinos? Listen, Donald Trump has, when he was president, had policies that I think have um, been very harmful to working people. You know, he gave tax cuts to billionaires and the biggest corporations. He will do that again. Um, without, but, why, but why is he winning with Latino voters? Not I winning, not winning, but, you know, winning more voters. But this is not my experience. Mm -hmm. My experience is I talk with Latino voters every day all the time. And there is an incredible amount of support there. Mm. Reporters are getting testy with Harris. NBC asked her about taxpayer-funded sex changes three times. Still couldn't get an answer. Do you believe that transgender Americans should have access to gender-affirming care in this country? I believe we should follow the law. I mean, I think you're probably pointing to the fact that Donald Trump's campaign has spent tens of millions of dollars. They're trying to define in, you on this. Yes, I'm asking yeah. you to define yourself, though. I believe that, that people, as the law states, even on this issue about federal law, 
that that is a decision that doctors will make in terms of what is medically necessary. I will move on, but I, I don't know that I heard a clear answer from you on the issue of gender affirming care. What do you want the LGBTQ plus community to know as they're looking for a full throated backing from you for trans for trans Americans? I believe that all people should be treated with dignity and respect. Period. Kamala just does what she's told, but she can't say that. So every answer is as painful for her as it is for you and me. And if she doesn't know where she's going, how is she going to take us with her? His plans will weaken America's economy. Then why do you think that's not landing with voters? Because oh, but in I the think numbers, it is. it's the opposite. Former President Trump leads you on this issue. Well, when I'm out, this is why I'm going out to Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, and, and, um, and, and Michigan, and Michigan yeah. excuse me, just got in late this morning, actually. Kamala is calling Trump tired and unfit, but hasn't held a campaign event in two days and can't remember Michigan. Thankfully, the voters know a lot more about Kamala than she does about us. What are your feelings, and I, uh, let me start with the women here, about Kamala Harris? I don't think that she has the personality. I don't think that she has what it takes to go up against Putin and go up against these other presidents that are built for this. She don't understand our struggles. Mm. And for me to believe you for another four years, you're crazy. Right. Like, you're crazy. You're saying the same thing that you said four years ago. Trump talks about this a lot. He says, you know, Kamala Harris became black right. when it was mm -hmm. convenient. Do you agree with him on that? Do you feel oh, like she's wearing Definitely. her blackness? Absolutely. She sworn into the, when she sworn into the Senate, it was as the first Indian American. Thank you. Which is, it's fine. We don't care. Yeah. We all know she's not black. Let's understand that. We, we are all clear of that. But well, my point of view, well, like I'm, I told I, you earlier, she's already been there. She's right. in office right now. Shouldn't black women in Philly be ride or die? That should be your base. At MSNBC was trying to cherry pick and they still couldn't find any love for Harris. It's gotten so crazy that Barack Obama is now saying Trump's too old. I don't vote, which means you're going to let a bunch of old people decide your future. You wouldn't do that about your music. <laughs> you wouldn't do that about your clothes. <laughs> But you're going to let them decide what your future, your potential careers, what the environment's going to look like. You're going to let them decide that. And you're not going to be, you're just going to opt out. That doesn't make any sense. Barry with the gray hair telling black men not to listen to boomers is kind of funny after he made us listen to Joe Biden for four years, the oldest president of all time. Black men are still sore over the last lecture. I was deeply offended, and it felt like a moment where it's like, you N-words better get in line and do what we say. And it felt like the Demo him as the czar of the Democratic Party coming down to say, go get these N-words in line. And the general tone of it was disgusting. It was abhorrent. I don't respect it. I didn't like nothing about it. Well, Democrats don't care if you're disrespected. Whatever it takes to win. Carville says, time to play dirty. And I'm really not interested in being very fair about the whole goddamn thing, okay? I'm, 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 I really don't think we should have fought fair against the Germans and the Japanese. I think we should have, like, snuck around them, and I think we should have, you know, gone behind him in lines and cut their <laughs> throats because that was what it was at stake. I think we're literally approaching the same place right now. And I'm not talking about everybody stop, don't faint. I'm not talking about actually slitting... A political opponent's throat. <laughs> After Trump survived two assassination attempts, Democrats are calling him Hitler, saying it's time to slit throats. So it means it's time for... New hoax alert. New hoax alert. <laughs> New hoax alert. The left's biggest hoax, Chef Jeffrey Goldberg at The Atlantic, has cooked up a doozy. Says Trump admired Hitler. There's no recordings of this, and everyone says it's baloney. But the VP who swallows hoaxes to go with her word salads ran to the cameras. It is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist who in fact vowed to be a dictator on day one and vowed to use the military as his personal militia. 
She was quoting Kelly there. Kamala is asking for trouble. She knows the Secret Service can barely protect 45. She's playing with fire. She knows it. And so is the White House. So just to be clear, when you said we do agree, President Biden believes that Donald Trump is a fascist. I, I mean, yes. We have said. He said himself. The former president has said he is going to be a dictator on day one. We cannot ignore that. We so in 24 hours, the highest levels of the Democrat establishment have called Trump a Nazi who should be locked up and have his throat slit. If Donald Trump wins, how are we going to have a peaceful transition? The left is saying Trump's a dictator who's going to turn the military on them. They're just going to hand him the keys to the White House and pretend like he's Mitt Romney? They're not just smearing Trump. They're saying half the country's Hitler. Listen. It doesn't so much matter that Donald Trump is selling fascism. What really matters mm -hmm. is that roughly half of Americans, including a clear majority of American men, are buying it. The average American man is saying yes to fascism right now. Why? In the last week, they've said American men are sexist fascists, oh, whose only chance of getting lucky in bed is if they vote for Kamala. They're admitting they have Trump derangement syndrome. I'm an optimistic person. I'm not hysterical. I laugh when people say, oh, you've got Trump derangement syndrome. Yeah. I think you, if you're a reasonable person, you should have Trump derangement syndrome. Rules for men, Jimmy, listen closely. Men should never let another person make them irrationally emotional. You don't give someone else power over you. Deep breath, Jimmy. Stoicism. I'll send you a book. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.